Hello everyone, thank you for your interest in my battery design software. This will be the video showing 3.1. Uh, I'm working on the 3.2 update that's actually going to have a totally revamped user interface and it's going to run a lot faster. But for now, I'll give you the rundown. So I'm just going to go over all the controls. We have cell diameter, which obviously changes the diameter of the cell. Cell spacing, which is the space between the cells. We have some bus bar options. They're only visible if you have one of the bus sides checked. See, you gotta have either A or B checked to see it. You can change these independently of each other to get a certain style. You can also click lock and that keeps them the same size to make nice, clean, solid shapes. Now we have the cell grid options. Uh, right now there is three options. Uh, but staggered really isn't a true option. You can pretty much ignore that. I'm going to add several different options, including a custom cell grid where you can drag around the cells and make all kinds of crazy batteries. But this staggered option was something I never really finished developing. As you can see, the bus bars don't quite properly work with it. So you can pretty much ignore that. But the two styles we do have right now are linear and hexagonal. And that's pretty much self-explanatory as far as what's going on there. And you can change that quickly just by pressing this button right here. Then we have the grid rotation, which does exactly what you think it will. And it just rotates the grid. It does affect the STL. So if you have it rotated this way, uh, it will give you an STL that's rotated that way. So just keep that in mind. Then, of course, the frame margin. That adjusts the distance in millimeters between the cells and the edge of the frame. There are several frame types. I'll go, go over them real quick. We have your rounded frame that works good for a lot of batteries, but you can see for this kind of battery, it makes it unnecessarily large. That's why I'm using the contour frame. Then we've got the you know traditional square frame, which would be terrible for this battery. And then compact square frame, which also does not look that great for this battery, but for many battery types it does. This is the same thing, but it's just smooth. And then here's your traditional cell holders. That'll look more familiar. And then circle frame, which definitely doesn't make sense for this type of battery. Next we have frame quality. This is key. Uh, if you have this lower, the user experience will be better even before you generate a frame because the number, the quality applies to both the visual representation and the data that's sent out to make the frame. I'm going to eventually make those separate. That way you can set the quality really low on your you know, client side end, but you can actually have it the frame quality very high when you generate it. Uh, but for now, it's just one quality. So it's best to have the quality low when you're working on it and then turn it up, you know, to somewhere between, I'd say between 40 and 50 and you'll get a nice high quality frame. 32 can work and that's what I have it at as default because it's faster, uh, but you know, it could look a little better than that. So once you determine the, the right frame that you want, you know, go ahead and jack the quality up. I don't recommend ever going to 128. Uh, Pretty much after 70 or 80, you're not going to notice a difference at the printer level, really. I mean, really. This is going to feel painfully slow, uh, but we'll go ahead and do a render, a generation rather. We'll take the frame quality down to 16, and I just want to see what the frame would look like if it was 5 millimeters. So I'm not going to use or print this. I'm just going to, it's a draft quality copy, basically. So here we go. I clicked that button. There is stuff happening right now on the client end. It's gathering all kinds of bits and pieces and things, and you don't get any status for that right now. So it feels like nothing's happening or it's just hung up, but that's just, it's just gathering everything and then it sends it to the server. Once the server gets it, then you get this confirmation that it's working on something and it's, it's doing work. I'll pull up the server console. I see it's done. It took 14 seconds once it got to the server to generate this. And here we are, okay? So that explains what the frame thickness is. That adjusts this dimension here. So let's go ahead and make this really thick. So I've clicked it. It's doing stuff. I can tell because it's hung up my 3D view. 
It's gathering all the point data and everything. It's probably got around there. Yep, it's packaged it and sent it. Now the server's got it. Now this end is running smooth again. And the server is doing the work. There we go. And I set it to not update the camera position when the new model comes in. That way, it, you know, that way you can look at something real close, click generate, wait for it to come in, and then see the change. The stopper ring height, this one right here, that adjusts the thickness of this from the bottom going up towards the top. So you'll see when it comes back that it will get taller. The stopper ring itself will get taller. There it goes. And then the stopper ring thickness, that's going to be the distance between the cell wall and the edge of the stopper ring. So we'll go ahead and generate that. So my computer that I'm using right now to record this isn't super fast. So if you guys have faster computers, the client side, this part, before we get the status bar, it'll actually go by faster on your computer. There we go. But once it gets to the server part, that's all up to my server. But it doesn't take too long. Like, I know it feels painfully long when you're, you click and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. And it's been a whole 30 seconds or maybe even a minute. But it's just so much faster than manually designing these. Even if you make tons of changes. And as you can see, it has made that change. There we go. That's it for the frame options. Then we have battery. This is just your basic cell information. You know, you put in the capacity of the cells you want to use, their maximum and continuous current, and then it computes that with the load into your measurements. Okay, and you get your amps per connection on the connect connection counter from the load that you put in here. So if I put 500 in here, see, this will go up over here. You obviously want these numbers as low as possible. You obviously want these numbers as high as possible. And then from these figures here, we have all of this information here uh, where it tells you the max current and all of that of the actual pack itself after considering the single cell metrics and its configuration. Here we have the file import and export. This is really just raw JSON text right now. I'm working on a proprietary file format. It's going to be .bd3, uh, but for now, it's just exporting the text. Okay, so look, you click the export button right here. It's not very clear that it's a button. Uh, but you click that, and it'll give you this text. You can then go to the same page, and then you can paste that in the import and it will load the battery. See, so that's a way to save it. So, like I said, I'll make it a proper file based system very soon, but for now, you can click export, you copy that to a notepad, some sort of text editor, you can save it, paste it back in. That's one way you can save a project. Uh, another way to save a project, if you don't mind the project being public, uh, you can literally just click this share button right here. Test one, two, three, or one, two, four, that'll work. And then you can go to the tools and you'll see there's a battery viewer. And this is all the batteries that I've shared. And here's test 124. Because I'm the owner of this battery, I can go in here and then it will load the battery. And then I can click this button, which unshares it. And as long as I use the same name, test 124, it will remove that battery from the database. I have lost it. I have lost it. Oh, here it is. Okay. And it is gone. It is gone. I will briefly cover these things. Uh, this is the current cell number or color that you're on. You can change that with A and D on the keyboard as well, so you never really have to click that. This is the move tool. Uh, when you click this, you can move the battery around. Uh, that's the generate button, which I just clicked by instinct, and now I'm generating a frame for no reason. This button here is the case generator. The case generator is in beta. It does not generate a working case right now, but it does generate a container that whatever battery you design in this program will fit in with a half a millimeter gap. I should have got that on video. It actually generates faster than the frames because the, the, the frames are slowed down by cutting all those cell holes out of it. 
Anyways, here's the casing and the lid, uh, but it's all in beta right now. Uh, I'm going to have options to either either have this mounting bracket or not. Uh, there'll be a, a way to easily put holes in it and stuff or a extra space for a BMS or something like that. I've already covered the share and unshare buttons. Uh, these generate the bus bars. Right now, when you generate the bus bars, it will automatically download the SVG file. There it is. And then it will generate the STL, and then you would have to optionally press this button like you normally do to download the STL, if you want the STL for the bus bars. Same thing for this one. See, it gives me the file. And there we go. And now, you see how fast the bus bars generate? You see how quick that is? That's because I'm not cutting much out of it. I'm not cutting 80 cells out of it. It's slow because I'm using FreeCAD. This is a perfect segue to the next segment of this video, which is performance. I'm going to break performance down into two categories, client side and server side. Okay, First, we'll talk about client side. Client side is when you're actually using the interface, when you're zooming in, zooming out, when you're moving around. I don't know if you can notice or if you can see it on the video that's being recorded but it's a little bit low frame rate I'm seeing like 23 24 frames a second what do you think Eric what is this what would you say that is I'm gonna say 32 okay so it's high 20s low 30s it's not where you want it to be we want it to be 60 frames a second at least okay we want to be synced to the monitors refresh rate so it looks super smooth and silky I know what the problem is on the user interface in fact if you go to the old one it does not have that problem. Okay, it actually does have a zooming lag, which I fixed in this one. There's no zoom lag. You can see it, the zoom's actually better in this one. The zoom is laggy in this one, okay? But other than that, this one actually performs a lot better. Look at this. Look, let's take the same battery. Let's export the JSON. And then import it into the old version. This is 3.0 right here. and it moves around a lot a lot better well I don't know if you can tell through the video but compare this to this this to this it's a little framey I don't know if it's a good example point of the matter is I know why performance has gone down other than zooming because that's actually better I know why performance has gone down on the client I won't burden you with a big technical explanation but I'll say this there's one big variable in this program called state that has everything in it and it makes it really easy to move data around and find where everything is. On this last update, I put a very big piece of data, which is all the points for the whole, for the, for the frame itself. They're actually in the state right now. I did that while I was in development to make some things easier. Now I've made those things work and I need to move that stuff to its own special variable so it's not clogging up the main state. That's just busy work that I have to do. That's not something that I have to figure out. I can do that probably this week. And now let's talk server side performance. I just set the frame quality to 84, so it's gonna take a while. It's 80 cells. It's the one of the most complex frames that has the most points. It's gonna take a minute. Now, this is obviously way faster than manually designing a frame, even if you know how to do it. And it's faster than learning a CAD program to be able to do it without any help. So it's helpful I, I get that it's faster but it needs to be much much faster the reason why it's as slow as it is is because at the core of all of this I'm using FreeCAD FreeCAD is a free open source modeling program that's not why I'm using it I'm using it because it has a command line interpreter it has a, a way to interface with it programmatically okay and it's really easy to use but it's kinda slow I wondered why it was slow. I did some research and found out that it's CPU driven and it's single threaded. So I thought, hey, FreeCAD maybe sucks. And then I looked up all the other modelers. They're basically the same thing. At least when it comes down to Boolean operations or CSG, constructive solid geometry, which are the type of operations that are required for this program, any CAD modeler, whether it has a command line interface or not, whether it's free or not, they all funnel down to a single core, very, very slow 
modeling engine. And there's just nothing I can do about it. Now, I do have like 8 cores on one PC and 16 cores on another. But in the real world, you can't just split up work like that. If the application's not written for it, it's not written for it. Now, the good news is I'm working on my own custom modeling kernel. It runs on the GPU. I've got an RTX 3080. And even if I didn't have a really powerful GPU, even if it was 25% as powerful as this GPU that I have, it would still generate frames 10 times, maybe 20 times faster than you're currently experiencing, okay? So there are several layers of performance optimizations that I can do in software for both the client and the server end. I could also just buy a faster CPU. Yes, yes. I could do some fundraiser or I could save money for it. I could really put my heart into getting the fastest CPU, but really, I need to make the software more efficient. If I got the fastest desktop CPU on earth right now, it would only generate frames 40% faster because even though it will have a stunningly higher total benchmark with all those cores, it still isn't going to have that great of single threaded performance. We haven't really seen a lot of updates in single threaded performance in CPUs over the last 20 years, you could really argue, but that's a topic for another video. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention, uh, in the measurements, it will tell you all the possible batteries that can be configured with the given number of cells. When you click these, it will try to automatically generate a cell layout, but I'd be really surprised if it was a good one or even worked. So you can pretty much just ignore this feature. It definitely works for low parallel counts. I mean, that would work for a 2S battery for sure. Uh, this would, th that would work for a 4S battery. Okay, okay. And then we have a problem. Oh, look, we got a separated series group here. But it does create something you can kind of start with, right? And then you can come over here and fix it. But, you know, you, you shouldn't have to do that. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make this generate really good valid layouts. I'm going to briefly cover some feature updates that are coming in 3.2. Okay, so all of the controls, this this uh, view visibility stuff at the top where you put the token all of this it's all going away and everything is going to be in a top strip at the top in a very nice easy to navigate menu system where you can put favorites on the front so you can put generate frame generate cell holders whatever on the front so you don't have to dig into the menus but everything you need will be in that top menu the main reason for that is to get everything out of the way to make way for mobile okay this is not mobile friendly right now, but the 3.2 update is going to make this work on phones. And that's going to coincide with some client side performance updates. Chances are the server side performance updates will not be around till maybe 3.4. I'm pretty sure that covers everything. I understand this video is rough. It's unedited. I've, all I've done is paused it when I'm not recording. Uh, if you have any questions or you have anything to contribute or comment, just let me know. Thank you.